This project is going to be a shorty tank car load that will be able to rest on top of the flat car. So this will rest on a wooden cradle with straps that hold it to the wood. And then the wood will be attached to a frame that picks up location on the stake pocket so that it keeps it from rolling or vibrating off the deck. And then if I have passengers, I can remove it from the tank car and, and set a seat on there so the passengers can ride. This is an old air compressor tank. It probably still holds pressure, but we don't really need to worry about that. I'll probably cut this on one of these end seams so I can take the cover off and then put in a coat or a, a backpack or some beverages, use it as storage space so it's not just a decorative piece. With my train being as short as it is, I need everything to, to serve multiple functions. The first thing I wanna do is take a cutoff wheel and remove these extra brackets and then we'll we'll take a tool and remove these valves so they don't get in our way. So now we're going to carefully cut at the wells. I'm going to try not to dig into the tank too much because I want to leave this fairly smooth. Persuade this thing off again. Oh, look at that. Excellent. Then we can take a flapper wheel and smooth those out. That one went right through. Look at that. There we go. Gently ground down with the flapper wheel until the bump was gone and then kind of feathered the edges on all of these areas where there are brackets. That one looks like it dug into the metal a little bit, so I'm just gonna leave it. I don't need to have this thing perfect. I'm looking at the end seam here and thinking that would be an excellent place to cut to have an end cap that comes off. And then I'm envisioning that I can weld on some tabs that hold this in place where you can just push it in place, maybe lock it with a pin or something. See if we can get that little valve off with a box wrench. I don't think we can. I'm gonna get out the big guns. Let's try a little bit coarser tool here. There we go. We have yieldage. Yeah. That's just a little, little bleeder valve. There's also a nameplate here. Since this is no longer gonna be a pressure vessel, I don't really need this to be on here. There we go. Loose. The wind is blowing outside, so I decided to take things inside. We're gonna have a look at this tank car here. And uh, I've got some pictures that I downloaded from online. Here's a white pass car. Just to get the general proportions of the dome, I decided that this needs to be the top of the car because there's some, some plugs on the bottom here that need to be the bottom just because they'll look better that way. And I can minimize them by grinding off the big wrench uh, square, uh, but, but I don't really want to delete them all together. It's just too much work. I got to figure out a center line here. We're roughly 25 inches. 
And so that would put us at uh, 12 and a half, which puts this little dude right in the middle. I'm going to cut a length of this pipe on the bandsaw, and I can just do a quick napkin calculation. I've got about an inch and a half, and I've got about a half an inch. So it's basically a, a third of the height of this car. If I take the height at about a foot, it gives me about four inch high dome. We're, uh, we're just kind of faking this real quick. Four inches puts us up to there. Um, that's also, there's going to be a little bit of a top to this. So I'm going to, I'm just going to round down a little bit and go three inches. I think that might be a little bit better. I don't want this to be too high profile because I may have to stack this on a flat car, on another flat car, etc. Cut a piece of pipe. Once we cut it, we'll set it on here and then I'll use a scribing tool to trace this contour so that that pipe just sits right on there. I decided we need at least one good side on this thing because I don't know how good the back side is. So I'm going to do my best to true it up on the lathe. Swing some oil. Just very gently come up against this and start picking off some metal here. There we go. Now we have a complete, complete trace line all the way around. I don't know if you can see that pencil mark, but that gives me a guideline. So it kind of has a rainbow shape and then it goes nearly to full length and back to rainbow shape. I'll take the angle grinder and chew away a lot of that and then fine it down with the flapper wheel. All right, here's the first pass. It's a little rough because I just got it off. I clamped it to a bench top and I just used the cutoff wheel to rough it out. After a little more fine tuning with the flapper wheel, I have a really nice fit here. There's no rocking back and forth. That'll look nice. These bottom bungs are not entirely level with the top ones. So that means our dome is gonna have to come off center just a smidge. We can find our top by putting a level on it and just sliding it around until we're happy there it goes. I used the bottom end plugs as references for where the bottom of the tank car should be. However, I noticed that if you draw a line through the center of one down the tank car, it wouldn't end up in the center of the other plug. So they were clocked slightly off of one another. So I split the difference. So either one of them is just slightly off of my center line, but that helps me find a bottom so that I know where to put the dome on the top. There's our true top. We've got a level on here and this is where we want it to sit. So I'm going to reestablish my witness marks. We need to come up with a dome for this thing. On the prototype, it's sort of a, a domed lid. And then on top of that is usually one that has multiple studs and dogs that you would tighten down like a, like a manhole cover with, with a pressure capability. We're going to have to come up with something there. I think a simple washer might get the job done. I'm starting to get an idea here. I think I think I'm formulating a plan. We can have a, a small, short section of small pipe with a washer welded to the top, and another washer on top of that that forms the lid, and then some some fake through bolts that hold the lid together with the top flange. I think that's that's a workable solution. I'm going to look through my spare parts and see what we can come up with. This is great. I think they use them as drain plugs. Check that out. We have an instant winner. I'll grind all that off and I can tack weld it to the inside of that dome. And boy, that, that makes me happy. Sometimes you win. So it, it pays to keep stuff. It, you know, the hoarders will always tell you it pays to keep stuff because you never know when you'll need it. I found this piece of pipe. That'll fit nicely in the dimple. Of course, it doesn't need to be this tall because I only need a rise of, I don't know, quarter inch or something. You just want to get above this level. The other option, I think my best option, short of going to the bandsaw, is I can put this in the lathe and part this off. And I can get a nice, clean, symmetric piece. 
I think that's going to fit better. Yeah, that's not going to work either. Let's bring it over the top. Let's get crazy. Put a little juice on there. Let's dial this right in. Too heavy procedure here. Keep it cool, sharp. And we're about to go zing. Any moment now. Doink. Okay. I want a quarter inch. And I know that this is about an eighth inch. In fact, I think it's exactly an eighth inch. We're going to put our dial indicator on here. And we'll zero it out. We've got our dial indicator right on the end of this carriage. And so now when we bring it over, we should be able to count out. There's one, two five thousandths. If you look over here, that's the width of our parting tool. So we've accounted for that width. Now we need to go an additional quarter inch because if we just if we had just gone the quarter, we would have only parted off an eighth because we're counting the width of that tool because it was resting against this edge. Let's go another 250 thousandths from there. There is 100, 200, 50 thou. Let's smell it. Oh, and you can feel it. Here we go. There it is. Down in the chip tray, down in the floor. A good machinist would have put something in the end to catch that, but I'm not a good machinist. I'm an amateur. Amateurs make those kind of mistakes. So now we have to go find that piece. Oh, there it is. It's, it's easy to retrieve. Of course, there's a little flashing on there, and it's hotter than the Hounds of Hades. So we're not going to mess with that for a second going to clamp this back in and of course it's not going to be straight or centered or anything but I'm just going to do that and then get the burr tool the deburring tool so if it's deburring does that mean it's warming because you're not burred anymore that's a bad joke and I won't tell it again I promise okay yeah that gives us the ability to safely hold this thing way right here there we are. Take that burr off. Let's do it again. Ooh, good catch. Cat-like reflexes. Put this in this side. And I don't want to crush this thing because it is not a full pipe anymore. It's a mere fraction of its former self. Check that out. There's our little riser. Now I need a top washer and uh, a top top washer. Ooh, ooh, what are, what are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? But it's kind of a neat shape. If you're a drummer, it looks like a set of hi-hats. But I kind of like that shape. It mimics the shape of the thing that it's sitting on. This is gonna be the, the lid on the dome for the tank car. These are two dish washers. I clamped them together with a nut and bolt. It's easier to clamp the, the nut than it is this whole washer. So I marked out eight line, uh, eight little dots and I'm gonna I put center punches in those. I'm gonna just drill little holes for some small nut and bolt assemblies. Holes are all drilled, but you can see there's a little bit of flashing or a burr. This is the bottom side flipped over. I don't have a small deburring tool that will fit in there, so I'm going to use a slightly oversized drill bit and just give it a quick quick buzz, and that knocks off all the flashing. I have to plan out how I want to weld this setup. So I'm going to have this base plate here, this little riser, and then this piece on top of the riser. I want to weld the riser to the lid because once the riser is welded to here, I don't have good access through to the lid. And then I'll bore this hole out bigger and catch the edge with a bead of weld or a couple of 
tack welds through to the other side where the riser sits. I used the parting off tool and just gently went in and cleaned off those little flats. So now it sits down really easily. Okay, there it is. I've got some Loctite on there, so that'll keep that from rattling off. I tighten these down and we're all set. You'll notice that the pipe fitting port just to the right of the dome is removed. I used a cutoff wheel to get it close and then a flapper wheel to bring it down nice and smooth with the rest of the tank. It was just too much in the way and caused the dome to be off center. Also, I took the plunge and removed the end of the tank. I used the welded seam as my guideline and stayed just outside of that to make a nice clean edge. I also went over the whole tank inside and out with a steel cup knot wheel shown just to the right of the drill in this still frame. That descales all the rust and cleans everything up. I did this outside because it makes a huge mess and I was absolutely covered in rust. So I wore face protection and respirator. And lastly, I removed the square portion of the bottom plugs on the ends just to clean those up and they look more like access hatches now. All right, I figured out the bottom catch mechanism for this. I wanna be able to set this in here like this with something that locates it, then bring it up and use a simple clamping mechanism or a screw or something to hold the top in. I think a single pin is all it takes. We just weld the tab on. And I think a little, little nib of this quarter inch down here will do just fine. So I'm just gonna drill a quarter inch hole in this little plate there's a nice reinforced area here where we can drill the corresponding hole. It's not gonna take a real long piece. I can weld this in place once I get it through the hole and then cut it to length, make it easier to hold on to. Let's do it that way. Okay, we need to mark the center. Uh, let's see, half of three quarters would be three eighths. And since I don't remember decimals and I don't wanna do the math, I'm gonna look it up on my chart. It is three eighths, 0.375. 0.3 and we come around to 75. Let's see if that puts a mark in the middle. Pretty close. I'm just gonna do that by eye. Ooh, hey, we got a bell, ha, crossing bell. It's kind of cool. through. Take you in real close. See the burr? That stuff will tear you up. And what we do is we grab an oversized drill bit, something that's way bigger than the hole. And they make deburring tools. They're like little pointy cone-shaped drills, but I don't have one. And just go in until you see, you kind of even rotate the drill until all the burrs are gone. I wanna be sure that this hole happens somewhere right about there. So I don't wanna have it end up there where it's on the edge, cause that makes it hard to drill. It needs to be right there. So I'm gonna mark this little piece where I want it to finish off. It's just approximate. Now, if I weld it up here, because we know that this this edge was cut from this edge. So I don't want to weld it on the edge or it gets in the way. It would be too low to get some clamp action on it. And then, then we can straighten it out. In fact, we can even put a square on it and just check our work. That looks pretty good. Some additional clampage. Oh, oh, <laughs> look at that. Okay, that's good. I need to get a quarter inch transfer punch. For those of you not familiar with transfer punches, this is what they look like. They index to the diameter of the hole that you wanna punch. And then conveniently, they have a little nub in the center that gives you the center of that hole. So you don't have to use a Sharpie and then try to estimate where the center is, which also works. I've done that a lot. There's one that says one quarter, one a quarter, 
So we're gonna grab a quarter right there. We're gonna make a punch. I'm actually gonna use a Sharpie first because I wanna be able to find that hole. And a Sharpie's gonna leave a bigger mark. And this hole is gonna be a little bit oversized because you can see that this is tilted. And so it has to be able to engage tilted and then come in. Let's see if I can hit this thing without hitting myself. Yeah, I can, I can see the mark on the, the metal. So we're gonna drill that before we lose our spot. I'm actually gonna start with a small pilot bit, one eighth. Okay, here's our quarter inch material. I've got it marked off to where I want this to end. So that's how much of a nub will stick down to engage the barrel. But I want to clean up this end and make it a point, you know, like a rounded curve. And so that's, we're going to go over the lathe and do that because I think it'd be a lot cleaner. If you don't have a lathe, you just use an angle grinder and spin it with your gloves. And that would work just fine too. easier to engage. I'm going to take a file. see it. Yeah, okay, that hole definitely needs to be a little bit larger. 1764th is the next size up. We want it to just pop in there. Oh, like that. Just clean that up a little bit on the outside and on the inside. That'll help guide the pin in a little bit easier. Let's just do one more check fit. And if we like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's secure. With a closure on the top, that'll be just fine. Now I'm going to align my, my center marks and make sure that this is where I want it, and I'll continue the hole. And what I need to think about is this pin is actually smaller than the hole. So let's, let's think this through before I get ahead of myself. The pin is 0.157 diameter. We've got this little detent pin and it has a spring-loaded mechanism in it, and these are quarter 20 threads. We'll verify that by engaging them on the tap here. So I'm going to tap the hole on here, and then we'll make a little ramp on this little tab here to make sure that that engages properly. I'm going to try to start this fairly straight if I can. This should just go in pretty easily. There it goes. Just like that by hand. What I'm going to do actually make a little bit of a channel that helps guide that in place. The other thing I want to do, I'm going to put a washer under this to separate it because we don't want it to hit like that because it'll never climb the ramp. We want the taper of that pin to hit the taper of this ramp setup. We want to be at least flush with the bottom, maybe slightly above like that. All right, I've got this clamped up in the vise. Our first step is we need to turn this into a ramp to help guide that pin up. So I've got some ideas. I'm going to use a, a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder. 
and make a little channel like that by just shaving away. In fact, I'm going to use a smaller, I've got a worn out cutoff disc. It's a smaller diameter that I think will allow me to sneak in there. What we want that pin to do is just ride up over that notch and into the hole. So when that comes in, we don't want to try to bend the pin. Well, it's funny you mentioned bending the pin because that's exactly what happened here. With very little effort, the little stainless pin bent inside of the detent mechanism and it was toast. There was no saving it. And I realized it needs to stand up to fairly robust use. So I came up with an even simpler plan. I've got a simple threaded knob here that threads into here so it doesn't get lost. And then you push the cover in place and engage it. And as it tightens down, it secures that so it's not going anywhere. This made a good stopping point for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to make some handrails, platforms, and add some other details that make it more interesting. If you like what we're doing and you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I just got over 500 subscribers, so I'm excited to see how many more people are interested in these kinds of projects. Thanks again.